<laughs> the history of black hair, our hair story. The history behind all elaborate designs and hairstyles originated in different ethnic groups in Africa. The first known example of dreadlocks date back to ancient Egypt where dreadlocks appeared on many artifacts. Ancient Egyptians with dreadlocks have also been recovered from archaeological sites. Socially, hair grooming played a significant part in status and identity in African tribes. It was a way to identify someone's social status based on ethnicity, social rank, age, marital status, wealth, fertility, manhood, religion, and death. Twisting, braiding, cotton or wool thread weaving, adding animal fat or mud and clay were all techniques used to create these elaborate looks. Due to styling taking hours and sometimes days, much like today, women use this time of beautifying as a chance to socialize and form meaningful bonds with one another. In 1444, Europeans began to kidnap Africans of all social statuses and trade them on the west coast of Africa. Many wore elaborate hairstyles. Although the Europeans were first entranced with and admired the complexity of style, texture, and adornment of black hair, something had to be done to rid them of their identity to maintain control and dependency. Many slave owners shaved not only the men's hair, but women's hair as well. This was considered an unspeakable crime to many tribes. In 1619, the first slaves were brought to Jamestown. After being on a ship for three months in unbearable conditions where hygiene, let alone hair care maintenance, couldn't be maintained, many of the enslaved Africans' hair was matted upon arrival. The enslaved Africans were no longer allowed to speak their native languages, do traditional dances, and maintain their hair in the styles that they chose. All of the African culture and grooming traditions began to disappear. Slave owners wanted to cut off the enslaved Africans' connection to their true self. They pushed their standard of beauty, fair skin, straight hair, and thin facial features. African dark skin, kinky hair, and wider facial features were deemed unattractive. Because of this, lighter skin, straight hair slaves commanded higher prices at auction. Due to brainwashing and internalizing color consciousness, many blacks promoted the idea that dark skin and kinky hair were less attractive and worthless. The enslaved Africans were given no way to care for their hair. In the 1800s, without combs and the herbal treatments used in Africa, they were forced to use bacon grease, butter, kerosene, and sheep brushes to maintain their hair. In 1845, metal hot combs are invented by the French and available to the United States. Many people believe Madame C.J. Walker invented the hot comb, which is incorrect. She developed a range of hair care products for blacks and popularized the press and curl style. In 1865, slavery ended, but the emotional and psychological scars lived on and are still evident today. Quote unquote good hair, or hair that is finer, curlier, and closer to that of Europeans becomes a prerequisite for getting jobs, entering certain schools, churches, and social groups. In the 1920s, Marcus Garvey, a black nationalist, urged his followers to embrace their natural hair and reclaim their African aesthetic. He is quoted as saying, you must remove the kinks from your mind, not your hair.
1954, George E. Johnson launches a permanent hair straightener for men that can be applied at home. A women's chemical straightener quickly follows. In 1962, actress Cicely Tyson wears cornrows on the TV drama East Side, West Side. This was a big deal because braids weren't considered a finished look for an adult woman. Usually this style was only worn inside the home. Angela Davis became an icon of black power with her large afro. The afro became a symbol for black power and pride. Kinky hair and dark skin is embraced and the phrase black is beautiful is coined. In 1968, Diane Carroll is the first black woman to star in a television network series. She is said to be the black version of the all-American girl with straightened curled hair. In 1971, Melba Tolliver is fired from the ABC affiliate in New York for wearing her hair in an afro. This caused a great deal of controversy. In 1977, the Jerry Curl exploded on the black hair scene. It was deemed a curly perm for blacks and the style lasted through the 1980s. In the 1990s, Essence Magazine declares sisters love the weave, but natural styles on locks are starting to become more accepted as well. In the 2000s, relaxers, braids, and natural styles are explored by African Americans. Around 2009, there is a surge in the number of women wearing their hair naturally. Many refer to this as the natural hair movement. In 2006, black hair care is a billion dollar industry. Black women consume 80% of the hair industry but only own 3%. Keratin and Brazilian treatments are marketed to smooth and straighten natural hair without damaging the hair. Naturals soon to find this to be false. Today, black women are wearing their hair in a variety of styles, both relaxed and natural. The number of women wearing their hair naturally has increased significantly due to the education on the harshness of chemicals used in relaxers, scalp conditions, a desire to lead a healthier and more active lifestyle, and a desire for naturally longer and thicker hair. Many believe to truly embrace, understand, and appreciate our hair, especially in its natural state and how it directly relates to our culture, we must understand its history and be willing to maintain a certain level of integrity and respect regarding it. I wasn't able to list everything, unfortunately. The video would have been way too long, but I encourage you to continue to research about this subject. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Peace, love, and light.